Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another Apple Business Lab. Um, for those of you that are joining for the first time, uh, this is just a networking platform for small businesses in Nepal and Wellington environment. And what we do here, we just showcase and we also just chat to Paul owners, entrepreneurs and people that have their own businesses so we can all learn from them. Of course, most of you know that if you have a own business or you're entrepreneur, it becomes a very lonely place. And yeah, Paul is booming and entrepreneurs always find innovative ways to make business happen. So we just want to have some form of networking platform. So if you haven't joined the previous times, we had some interesting guests, interesting lessons. So tonight we of course have another guest, his name is Gary van der Berg. Um, he's an entrepreneur and he's also the owner of Gem Appliances. Um, he's also got a, a very interesting story. So I've been hounding him for quite some time to come sit with me on the couch. And finally I got hold of him and he's tonight sitting with us on the couch. So we're just going to chat with him about his journey. Um, he's owned a few businesses and yeah, maybe he can just give us some lessons on yeah, how to start a business, what are the challenges and what are the big mistakes uh, for the young entrepreneurs and the young aspiring entrepreneurs to learn a few lessons from those that have been through it all. So, yeah, without further ado, let me introduce and say hello to my guest, Gary. Good evening. Good evening to you. Thanks for the opportunity as well. Yeah, thanks for joining us on your busy schedule. <laughs> Everything good? No problem. Everything's good. Okay. Uh, we're getting back to normal as well. All right. So, uh, it's starting to look yeah. to where it was before. Cool, man. Yeah, first of all, yeah, just thanks again. I know you entrepreneurs are very, very busy people. And if you have some of the time, at least I don't have to pay per hour for this consultation. <laughs> so um, basically, we just want to hear your story. First of all, of course, you've been in the corporate world and you've moved over to starting your own business. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know we also chatted last time you had established a business in China as well. I mean, that's also something probably exciting also and daunting to have a sure, uh, uh, sure, office yeah. in another country. But first of all, of course, you are Paul, born and bred person. Uh, tell us school and first job and second job and yeah, third job. Yeah, well, uh, obviously, you know, I was born and bred here. Uh, I went to school at Klein Niederberg. Cool. Matriculated there in 92, well, then moved on to UWC. Didn't do too well in the first year, obviously. What did we study there? Uh, actually, become economics, cool. but uh, didn't finish. Uh, then, uh, while I was actually at school, I was already working at ShopRite Checkers as a casual. Right, nice. Um, Which one, you in Paul? Yeah, in Paul, Lady Grey Street. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah but the big checkers, the that, that time it was the, the biggest Only checkers in, in Paul, yeah. <laughs> um, and from there, basically, I got identified by a colleague at the time. Um, to join the management program. I started out with Chopra Checkers, uh, finished in a couple of years' time, and then obviously moved on to store management. Nice. Spent a lot of time, a lot of, uh, spent a lot of time in stores. About, uh, I spent about probably about four or five years in stores, uh, all over the Western Cape, uh, Borland area especially, uh, Worcester, uh, Sears, uh, Robertson, Paul, uh, uh, Wellington mm. even as well mm. um, and then from there um, went into more of like a troubleshooting role uh, in the Western Cape and then went off to Rondebosch and it's more of the southern suburbs. Uh, we actually they started the new generation checker store in mm. Medoridge the first time and I joined that uh, store at the time. Um, that was actually a lucky break because there I actually got identified or actually got uh, seen for the first time by top management in the in the head office business, in cool. the head office group in, yeah, in, in nice. Brackenfell, uh, specifically uh, the outdoor guys, mm, mm. and then they invited me for an interview to become a buyer. All right, cool. So then I became a buyer for Shopra Checkers uh, training. <coughs> Excuse me. What does what does buyer mean? <coughs> uh, okay, so buying basically uh, what it entitles is basically you go around to see suppliers or suppliers come and see you. Okay. You decide whether what products go into the stores. Wow, okay, so it's like powerful, right. powerful Yes, it's, it's quite a powerful, yeah. powerful job to have. But the, essentially with Shopra Checkers, because most of their buying came from overseas. Okay. So as soon as you start, you get your first step overseas, you go to China. Okay. And you get to start knowing the products and understanding <clears throat> your supply chain over there as well. Okay, cool. So, so I spent a lot of time in China, mm. uh, two to three times a year. Nice. Uh, establishing... Rangers, mm. brands, mm. Uh, because uh, Shopra Checkers basically uh, had their own OEM brands, which is their own type of brands. Okay. So they, they invested a lot into marketing 
what they call their brands. Okay, cool. Um, so I did uh, outdoor hardware, uh, mm. spent a lot of time on small electrical, mm. which is your plugs, your bulbs, mm. that kind of stuff, mm. and then moved on to small appliances. Okay, cool. And well, small appliances is basically where my whole story started. Mm. Mm. So, so that was my biggest role in, in, in the business. Um, so how long were you at, how long are you still at Chickas? How long are you at? I, I actually started in 95. I finished up in, uh, I think, 2008. Jeez, okay, yeah, wow, so I spent so a lot of, yeah, yeah, it was a very good innings at ShopRite. Um, it was an amazing time. Mm. I mean, you really got to know, to learn so much more than we, in, in any other corporate environment, especially mm. from a retail point of view. Mm. Mm. Um, spent a lot of time in Africa, Angola, Nigeria. Nice. Uh, opening stores especially, because that's the time when ShopRite moved into Africa. Mm. And that is basically where I set the bar for myself as well. Mm. Um, then I got approached. After okay. two, two, 2008, I got approached by uh, the Clicks Group to join Discom Group. Discom? Yeah. Discom. Discom was an old business, a uh, pharmaceutical business. Okay. Uh, that was big in South Africa at the time. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, same year, me joining them, they got bought over by Edcon Group. Oh, wow. Okay. Then I moved over to Joburg and worked for Edcon as a buyer as well. All right, cool. So now we're buying think, clothes or what? No, no, no. Oh. So it's mostly in the hardline business, All right, cool. also small appliances. Yeah. Um, at the time, they, they needed someone to, to basically massage that business into mm. a more growing mm. environment for them as well. So ended up at, in, in Joburg, spent a couple of years there, and eventually decided to come back. Mm. At the time when I came back, uh, I joined another group called Joint Asia Corp, mm. which I partnered with uh, a, a Taiwanese guy. Okay. And uh, we went on servicing retail, like okay. clicks, the likes of clicks, the likes of... Okay, uh, cool. So, so clicks was actually a biggest customer at the time, so yeah. we, we, we did most of that business, the Safeway business. So what do you mean you partnered with them? Did you work for them or partner? Well, yeah, it was a more like, because it was an offshore company, yeah. it's very difficult to become a partner at that time okay, uh, in okay. that business. So yeah. basically what we had to do is establish an African arm of the, of the business okay. and then basically the, the one company would look after the other company. So basically okay. a, a baby brother company situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had a 35% share in the baby brother All company right. kind okay. of situation. Okay, okay, get you. Just quickly, in your mm -hmm. term at ShopRite Chickas, ever at the seat at the table next to Whitey Basson? I mean, P plenty of times. Okay. I mean, th that business. The, if you if you look at if you look at the structure of ShopRite Chickas and how they've uh, and how they managed to uh, possibly maintain the uh, um, the level of of of, of efficiency, mm. especially in the management programs, is mm. that they don't have the middle style management. There's no. 20 managers before you get to the Whitey Basan kind of situation. Okay. There's a director which is responsible for the department and he has to look after that business. Okay. And you report directly to that guy. You report Jeez. directly to the director. Oh, okay, nice. Which, which gives you uh, mm. basically a, a, a good platform to learn from as yeah, well. Yeah, of course. I mean, <laughs> and that's why I sometimes look at some of the other corporates that I work with mm. as that there was never an opportunity for the younger guys to, to, to take a step up mm. to, the, to the plate and mm announce themselves yeah yeah <coughs> yeah, yeah like like we used to be able yeah. to do in shop right yeah. checkers and your experience with him at the table i mean um he's an amazing guy okay cool uh, yeah. i think he's probably uh, he, his thinking his methodology mm. is, is is out of this world mm. um he's a pretty straightforward guy mm. if he likes something he likes it mm. um i remember that we uh, as buyers we had to present to him we okay. had to go to china and actually present him in china wow. so he actually went over in march and then you had to present your range going forward for that remainder of the year Jeez. and for this next season, whatever the case may be. Okay. So it was quite an experience. Yeah, of course. And it was, a, it was a, actually an eye-opener as well mm. to how the business world worked. Mm. Mm. And, uh, mm. and, 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 and funny enough, when I got exposed to China, it's not like a once-off situation because now you have to go this season, you have to go to the next canton, you have to go to the... Mm. It was a constant mm. work, a constant environment of learning uh, and you, you walk with seniors, you, you learn from these guys, they explain mm. to you how these things work. Mm. And it was a very, like an open cascade yeah. of learning kind yeah. of situation. Oh, but that's a, I mean, you wanted exposure as a youngster. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. From there, moved on to uh, Clicks Group and then over to Edcon. Yeah. Edcon gave me a different type of learning platform uh, because in ShopRite you never got to deal with planning. Okay. So you as a buyer had to feel and understand what this product was all about. Mm. Make a decision you wanted 
X amount of units, whatever the case may be, mm. where in the econ environment, that type of environment, you had to plan. Mm. So you had a planner saying, oh. you can only buy, yeah. or you can only do this, yeah. which I was not really used to, because yeah. I was the guy that just made the decision, I want that table, I want that chair, mm. Mm -hmm. uh, I want that bottle kind of situation, mm -hmm. but in that kind of situation, they decided how many you could buy. Okay, I see. So, okay. so, so it was different, mm -hmm. but it was a good learning curve for me as well. Mm -hmm. It gave me the financial arm to, to the business as well, and made me understand that <coughs> whether you decide, whether you think it's the right thing to do, mm -hmm. you must look at the other situations that determine your decision making as yeah, well. Yeah, cool. Especially cool. If, if, there's a, if there's already a history of those type of products in the market, mm -hmm. and they'll be able to tell you, your plan will be able to tell you, that that might not be a good idea to buy 10,000, yeah. but rather start for three. Okay. Because there's a history that when we put in three, it's, it's we sold three yeah, kind of situation. Yeah, yeah, get you. So, so that was a good learning curve for me as well. Okay, then you were JF, JNC, JSC? No, that Joint Asia Corp. Yeah, so, so, so came back, worked with him for a couple of years. Uh, we did well. Okay. Um, then afterwards, I, I looked at this, the situation. I said to myself, uh, there was a big uh, concern because a lot of the retailers in South Africa wasn't really doing their own thing. They were buying from the guys importing. They were buying from the big brands. Okay. And, and they, because they didn't, the, the, the risk was high, they didn't understand the processes, whatever the case was. And I thought to myself, I changed it. I, I then we looked at a business model, being able to address those kind of issues. Okay. okay. Uh, to make it easy for you to bring in your own appliance, to make it easy for you to not worry about inspections, to not mm. worry about LOAs, mm. to not worry about uh, certification, to mm. not worry about that kind of stuff. Mm. And I partnered up with a guy that used to work with me when I was in Joint Asia in, in China, and we opened up an office in Ningbo, in Yu okay. Yao. Amazing guy. Uh, uh, we've been working together for, I think, probably close to 10 years already. Jeez. Um, and uh, so he also comes to South Africa to see to, to understand what we buy, how we buy, why do we buy the way we do. Mm. And, and some, because it's a very good learning curve for him as well. So when he looks at a product, when he goes to a factory, he knows, okay, this would be something I would be interested in. Yeah. yeah. You understand? Yeah. But I spent a lot of time in China. Mm. I mean, I, I remember a stint that I spent about, I think, two and a half, three months there. Wow. Which was, uh, which was quite uh, something. Because mm. when I went to Ningbo for the first time, it was not really, really a big city, it was a mm. small city. I mean, there was no hotels. Mm. We lived in business apartments. Mm. Um, today, it's one of the biggest cities in the world. Wow. Purely because of the industries that, yeah. that they've created there. Yeah, so, I mean, you, of course, on the coal face, paint me the <coughs> picture of how industrial China looks. So we all see on TV and we know um, everybody buys whatever products there because, of course, it's cheaper to make. Paint me, yeah, paint us a picture of just industrial China. Like, you in the factory, you see what the people are doing. Yeah, I mean, China is, is, is like everywhere else. Mm. Well, I, most people will paint you those type yeah. of different pictures about this bad side and this good yeah. side, whatever the case may be. But they also take a lot of things in, 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 in cognizance where they, they think, okay, we, we, we have to close down the plants in this area for the, because of pollution. We yeah. have to look after our people. We yeah. have to do this. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and the reality there is that most people work. Mm. Uh, they, and, and it's not small salaries. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the industrial side and the agricultural side is basically the same right now. Mm -hmm. Years ago, it, used, it wasn't like that because the industrial side paid the people a lot more. Mm -hmm. Today, it's as difficult to maintain a Chinese factory as it is like anywhere else in the yeah. world as well. Yeah. China is it's an amazing country. Uh, a lot of the cities that I've been to, I've spent a lot of time with, with, the, with the people, with the indigenous people, mm -hmm. um, I eat what they eat. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, I love it. Okay. I mean, uh, I actually gain weight in China, so okay. <laughs> trust me, I love eating there. Uh, um, and the funny thing is that they, they're, very, well, they're very understanding. Mm -hmm. They also understand that people look at them a certain way. Mm -hmm. and, and they find it very funny because they, 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 when they start talking to each other, mm -hmm. and they say, no, but this guy is very rude. Mm -hmm. Just charge him an extra dollar or two on that product. Yeah. You, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that's basically, if you are courteous to them, they are courteous to you. Okay. If you look after them, they look after you. And, okay. and the quality is basically what you buy, what you... Yeah, of course. You pay for what you get. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's as simple as it is. Yeah. It's not like you're going to get something special mm. for a much lower price yeah. than anywhere else. Yeah. Obviously, their management, their production levels are so much higher. So a guy earning 8,000 rand a month in South Africa in a factory earns exactly the same in China. The okay. difference is this guy's making 100,000 units, 
where you're making 10,000 units. Okay. So the cost of production on a product is much lower. Yeah. And that's the only difference, the real difference that I could see. Okay. okay. So it's about the uh, volumes driven yeah, yeah, yeah. through the factory that brings the cost of the production down. Totally. So I don't scale, think, pe like yeah, I don't think people get this other thing that, no, but in China they pay the people less. Yeah. No, they don't. I'm sorry, they don't. There's, okay. there's, there's certain criteria they have to follow when they have a factory. Yeah, yeah, of course. They have to feed the people correctly. They have yeah. to have a place yeah. to sleep. Uh, they have to earn a good salary. Yeah. And, and that's all normal. And basically, it all, it's all got to do with the production levels. Yeah, but How I many units get produced yeah, every and I, year? And I would think if you're, a big, if you're a big listed company in South Africa, you also have to source sustainably. So sure, they also have sure. to vet that. The, of uh, course. Of, and, I mean, that's, and that's why there's uh, lots of certification done. Yeah, there's yeah, a lot of, of third-party audit companies that's being used to do those audits. Mm. Uh, mm. Um, a good example is that uh, if you take the Walmarts of the world, yeah. uh, even the shoplights of the world, they, they physically go into the factory to see what's mm. actually happening at the factory, mm. to see what the, the floor looks like, mm. to see uh, how, how they, the people are working, mm. what the living conditions are, what the eating conditions are. So, and, 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 and I've been to a couple of factories that were really bad. Mm. I mean, you walk into the factory and I say, Natalski, sorry, I'm yeah. not even walking past this door. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's not something I would even invest in mm. or look at for, yeah. for that matter. Yeah. So we have our standards. Okay. I think every other company in the world should have the standards as well. Mm. So, so I don't think that China should be looked at as the cheaper version. Mm -hmm. Because if you want to pay $5 for a cell phone, you're going to get a $5 cell phone. Yeah, yeah. If you want to pay $100 for a cell phone, you're going to get a $100 yeah, cell 100%. phone. Uh, so basically, that's how mm. I perceive China. Mm. Okay, so we on our own now. We decided we've yeah. we figured out this market now. We figured out for big retailers to get they were working with a middleman. You are going to try and make their lives easier. Basically, uh, so 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 I'm I'm trying to be a a, a solution yeah. to a, a long-standing problem. Yeah. But over the years, what's been happening is that the doors of China has become wider. Mm -hmm. It's become easier for retailers to get to China. It's become easy for them to, to, to gain the knowledge of having to deal with the Chinese companies, mm -hmm. having their own people go to China, having to go to the Canton Pairs, having to go to, mm -hmm. to all these kind of situations. And it's become difficult mm -hmm. for all of us. But that's why we try to keep it to a niche situation where small appliances has always been the most difficult type of category to look at. Mm -hmm. Well, that and hardware, obviously, uh, electrical hardware. So, so I've always tried to maintain that type of aura where I'm willing to do the difficult stuff, yeah. rather yeah. than do the easy stuff. Yeah, and get paid the for the difficult stuff. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and I think that's basically where we set the difference apart mm. from the other guys. Yeah. Okay. So, you of course work for the Edcon. Now you're going all by yourself. I mean, yeah. What, what goes to the head? Like you're saying, okay, I, I'm for, of course earning a good salary. I have sure. uh, some security. Where do you shift from saying, okay, I'm done with this. I want to go on my own. I've noticed, and do you just you just stop and you just say, okay, I'm going to start my own company. Yeah, sure. It's, it's, it's actually not as, as simple as that, yeah. but, 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 it, <laughs> but it, it comes down to you've started to, to create almost a, a platform mm -hmm. of connections. Yeah. So now that you know, okay, so I know there's a guy in China that can support me. Mm -hmm. I know that if I require a sample to come to South Africa and I have to give it to a retailer, mm. I don't, he's not going to question me because he understands or he trusts my judgment mm. by saying, I need that sample. Correct. So send me the sample. I offer the sample to the okay. retailer. I say, Mr. Retailer, this is the sample that you've selected. What do you think? Do okay. you like it? Is there anything we should change about it? And if he says, well, I think I like it, whatever the case may be. So what's the next stage? Mm. I then go over to... Um, the LOAs and the, yeah. the checking and the yeah, testing, yeah. whatever. But to, to make that shift from, from being in corporate to, to having your own business, it's, it's quite a massive yeah. change, yeah. especially in your lifestyle, especially the way you think, because now you've got, you've got sleepless nights, mm. you, you're constantly working, because you're trying to understand where can we make it work, whatever the case may be. Mm. And sometimes you get the big breaks and sometimes you don't. Mm. I mean, mm. over the years I've had big breaks and over the years I've lost most of those big breaks as well. Mm. So, so you need to understand that there's risk involved, mm. okay. um, but you manage risk. Yeah. You say what can, or what I can't do, mm. uh, what I'm willing to risk. Yeah. You know, that type of questions yeah. you have to ask yeah. yourself yeah. On a, on a re at, at a reasonable stage in your life as well. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, I mean, now you've started your own business like day one, like you're day one now, yeah. you're done with corporate, 
what we now is looking for product? I mean, you of course know what you're doing. So uh, what's the okay. next step? Okay. So, so, so basically, what what we did was or what I did was when the the joining of Joint Asia when yeah. I worked with, I picked up a lot. Mm. So obviously. He was running the business. Essentially, yeah. he was the managing director of the company. I was a, a sales director. And basically, you learn, you understand, you, mm -hmm. you see what risk is willing to take, what is not willing to take, whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. And you start creating this little budget in mm -hmm. your head. Mm -hmm. What do I need to start? Yeah. How do I start? So I need one customer. How do I get to that customer? So you start making appointments. Now you start going into their businesses and you start investigating what are they doing right and what can you possibly help them with. Cool. It's very difficult to tell a buyer is wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's never wrong. Yeah, of course. But yeah, you can look at these categories and say, maybe we can grow your business by X and X percent. Okay. Whatever the case may be. It's my job now to convince that buyer. Yeah. To be able to buy okay. into that wow. idea. So, so you now on the total other side of the table. Sure. Because so now, now you, I have to say. Now you're approaching what you used to be before and say, yes. hey, Mr. Buyer, I've got a product. How can I get my product into your retail? Of course, of course. Jeez, okay, cool. But... Obviously, because of my history in Rita, mm. my history with ShopRite, mm. my history with Edcon, my history with, mm. with Discom at the time, whatever yeah. the case may be, that helps. Yeah. That gains a little bit of trust. Yeah. Uh, uh, so they think, okay, hang on, this guy has done this for these big corporate companies, mm. why wouldn't he be able to do it for me yeah. kind of situation? So there's a bit of credibility now. Yes. Okay. So, and but now, and Yes, 100%. Yeah. And, but now you still have to constantly follow up yeah. see him twice three times a month whatever the case may be yeah. just to explain <clears throat> and constantly change your model yeah. so so you you're sitting here and you, this buyer's talking to you and you 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 suggesting these 10 products to you yeah. but now if you pick up okay hang on he's moving towards that direction on that product yeah. whatever the case may be so now you stop start dropping products now you yeah. start dropping five or six items you start building onto that idea that he's got okay cool. so the next time you present it's, it looks better to him okay so okay. now I start by okay, so get, okay, give me three or four of those products. Let me see, have a look at it. Okay. So you start getting the samples okay. in, you get, get the price right, and whatever yeah. the case, and make sure that it's very competitive to the to to the others. Yeah, yeah. So 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 we were never obviously every business is profit driven. Yeah. But I wasn't profit. I was more about longevity. I wanted mm -hmm. him to know that I'm there to back him. Mm -hmm. So if he tells me uh, three of the products out of the ten, he tells me Gary, I need to come out to the promotional price. Mm. I break even. I don't care. Yeah. Because remember, it doesn't matter what happens now. You can break even for that three products, but to a year down the line, two years down the line, yeah. you've built up a, a sizable business. Yeah. With those things, don't matter anymore. Yeah. So, I mean, tell me, what is the experience of being on the other side? So, you were the buyer, people approaching <laughs> you? Because I'm experiencing it now. Because now, previously, I was on the other side of the table. Consultant would come to me. But now, I'm on the other side. But, I mean, yeah. for me, I, I, it's daunting for me. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, how, how was that experience? Well, being a shop right buyer, you had a certain amount of clout. Of course, yeah. yeah biggest no, I mean, retailer. Yeah, yeah. So, so, you had a certain amount of clout. And, uh, and, and it, it was... You, you were also learned in a very, taught in a very abrasive uh, 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 environment as well. Yeah. So yeah. you picked up on it. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. and years down the line, you realize, but hang on. Yeah. Maybe, okay, now that you, the, yeah. the guy that's selling, <laughs> it's not so nice to get that type of hidings from time to time 100%. as well. But you understand it. Mm. It's not just an emotional decision mm. or emotional feeling that mm. you get. You don't, you don't feel that bad. Mm. You react to what you hear. You, mm. you know, this guy wants it this way. Yeah. So you give it to him that way. Okay, so big lesson is your type, read your client type sure, of thing. Sure, you have to. Property. You always consider read your, your clients. You, they, they might not always agree with you. Mm. You might think you have the best product in the world. Which everybody might, thinks, of course. Sure, but yeah. they think well, maybe it's not the yeah. best product for yeah. our business. Yeah, and I like the other thing also you mentioned that it's uh, not emo emotional. It's a business deal. It's when a business they, deal. When they tell you so, no, don't no, it's it no. Yeah. no and yes is the best answer. Maybe it's, I don't like maybe's because maybe's it keeps you hanging. Okay. You're thinking maybe is yes. Okay. Because you don't want maybe's, you want to no. know. Yeah. If it's a no, it's a no. <laughs> okay, you cool. still get a lot of maybe's, but yeah. you don't want to deal with yeah. maybe's. Because okay. remember, you, you're still looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, I mean, so now we're looking for clients. So, where does Gary get new clients? Because now you're saying, <laughs> I've got the product, I've got the sure. best thing in the world. Uh, now I have to get my product into the store. So, yeah, what yeah. We, or are we sourcing clients? So, you are an entrepreneur, you are a consultant, how do we get the client? Yeah, and I think first thing is you, 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 have to, you have to understand what they need. Okay, cool. Uh, investigate, check, uh, go stand in their stores, look how the people shop, mm -hmm. spend hours there. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I think that's one of the biggest lessons I learned at ShopRite. Is it doesn't really matter uh, what you do in an office, but once you're in the store, mm -hmm. you, you see and you understand mm -hmm. what that customer is buying. I mean, you, you ask yourself, why is that customer buying five kettles? Mm -hmm. and, and, and you say, but the, um, he's only gonna, yeah, but it, it never lasts. So that's why I'm buying five. It's on special hours, I'm buying five. Mm. So, but, but you don't want that type of emotional decision because yeah. you want that guy to trust your product as well. Yeah. So now your buying pattern as a buyer changes. You okay, want cool. to now look at better quality. Yeah. Uh, you want to give a better, you highlight the fact that the warranty is now 12 months on the box instead of wow. hiding it on the side of a box kind of situation. Wow. You understand okay. what I'm saying? Okay. So you have to constantly read your customer. You mm. have to spend a lot of time in stores. Mm. Um, you have to then create a process of understanding what that buyer might need mm. and also listen to what they want. Okay. It's very important to understand what they want and try and, and put that two together almost mm. and then present something that they would be beneficial to both of you basically. Okay, but how do you, how do you determine what the client wants? I mean, you in the store now. Okay, so now you go into the stores and you look at the products and you look at the ranges and you look at the shortcomings and you look at, and you say, wow, but these guys have done a brilliant job of this. Yeah. But next to it, it's not so good. Okay. So now you see a gap. Okay, hang on. So they've done this. Maybe we can look at presenting some products that would work for their business. Right. Okay. Now you have to go to the buyer. But now while you present to the buyer, they give you little leads. Mm. They give you, they leave the little mm. stories and they mm. talk about this, they talk about that. They say things like, oh, did you see that? Oh, did you see that? And you start mm. making notes. Mm. You start making notes and then you go investigate those, those, those little qu uh, quotes or... Yeah. You yeah, know, the kind yeah, of situations yeah. that they brought up, whatever. Yeah. So then you go look at that and then you investigate from there. So and then go and present again and present again and present yeah. again. Because are we getting but that clients? also But that also creates a relationship. Yeah, of course. Because they get to know you. Yeah. They see that you react to it. Mm. So they're starting mm. to trust. The, the trust starts coming there. Mm. Remember, it takes up to maybe a year or two years um, before. E before you even get an order. Jeez. It's okay. worth the wait once you get the order, obviously. Yeah, because you are, of course, getting... What, 100,000 kettles in that shop? Like okay, not the, the year, years ago, that was those kind of quantities. Yeah. Today, it's more about, I think, uh, I think the consumer now relates more to quality okay. than to price. I think people have gone past the idea because people don't want to spend this money on the same product every okay. time. Now they want to rather buy a good-looking stainless steel kettle rather mm. than the plastic kettle. Mm. If they can't afford the stainless steel kettle, but they must have the option of buying up. So now they buy the stainless steel kettle, they take it home, they're happy with their purchase. Mm. They, st they put it on the counter, they're more proud of the product, whatever the case may be. Oh. So I think the, so you don't buy 100,000 yeah. of a $10 kettle situation. Mm. You can buy 100,000 of a $5 kettle. Yeah, okay. so it, it's it's yeah. a different business yeah. now. Yeah. Okay, so how, how's Gary getting clients? How, how, now you, you, how are you getting clients? <laughs> uh, keep on pushing the button. Keep on phoning, keep on asking for meetings, uh, setting up appointments, uh, coming up with new ideas. So this is like cold calling, hi buyer, I need a meeting with you. Setting up an appointment. Remember you also have a rapport now with the buyer. Over the years you've set, you've set yourself up. Mm. So now you, you can't just w go and set up an appointment every week. Mm. You have to have a plan. What is my plan? So you, you're constantly thinking about new ideas, how to, how to get on that buyer's good side yeah. to be able to, 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 to 100% to, to get that same yeah. situation in their heads that you have in yours. Yeah. Okay, so when's the first product shipped from China? Okay, so, so, so obviously now this past couple of years has been probably the most difficult couple of years mm -hmm. I've ever had to endure uh, during the COVID period. I think uh, we haven't done good business since, I mean, prior to October 2019, we were looking good in the growing very well. Um, after that, everything just fell flat. Okay. So remember when COVID hit China, yeah. what people don't realize is that although we only got hit in March, like real, uh, mm. realistically March, Feb, March, whatever mm. the case may be, but when it hit China, everything stopped there. Mm. So whatever orders I had there couldn't be shipped. Mm. So now I had to wait till, and when we, we were able to ship again from there, it stopped on this side. Yeah. So yeah. business has been dead for, for the past couple of years yeah. for most of the guys in my situation. But obviously then you go and change your business model slightly. Yeah. You gotta start looking at local guys. You mm. gotta start looking at mm. what can I do from a local point of view and support a local industry. Uh, and then from that point, I started looking at, well, I created another business and another business and started mm. 
trying to get income from that side mm. as well. Mm. So, so and I've taken on one or two partners and then obviously from there, mm. we started building the mm. business up again. Okay, so Gary starts his own business. What's the first invoice? I mean, who were invoicing and how did you get into the first, I mean, what's that feeling? My first invoice, uh, when I started, my actually, my actually my first invoice was with Pick and Pay. Nice, okay. Uh, we, I, I, I put together a novelty range for them. Okay. Like donut makers, popcorn makers. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. that kind of stuff. Waffle uh, makers. There we go, yeah, there we okay. go. I put together a range with them, and that was my first invoice. It actually was very, it was actually a very, uh, it was an amazing feeling mm. to do your own, to do your first business, especially yeah. with a corporate like that as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, didn't last long, unfortunately. It, it lasted for about a couple of years, and then obviously I moved on. Okay. Edcon, I worked with Edcon, I worked with uh, um, one or two local guys as well. Okay. And, and I started looking at the smaller guys as well, mm. smaller companies. I remember working with a, a lighting company as well. Mm. We did some tubes and globes as well. So, so there's always little yeah. opportunities yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Uh, I mean, last year we did, or uh, well, this year, and uh, last year we did, uh, beginning of this year, we even did uh, uh, big retailers. Uh, uh, um, store uniforms okay. and masks. Right. So, and, and it was quite a sizable business. Mm -hmm. So, I didn't, I mean, you don't realize these things, but these guys need to fit their people out as well. Mm -hmm. So, we started looking at those type of situations mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So, from starting your own business to the first yeah. invoice, how long is that? For me, uh, 2014, I think. No, basically, I think in the first three or four months. Already. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah, but Remember, we set it up. Yeah, I set it up yeah. before already. Okay, all right, cool. So let's talk. Uh, okay, let's first talk. So Jim's is now. What's Jim Appliances doing now? I mean, what is okay? Jim Jim Appliances. Jim mm -hmm. Appliances now. Uh, we're starting to get there again. Okay. We've got a couple of products on the horizon, but what I've realized is that. Um, doing the OEM business, um, which is the own brands of, okay, of cool. the several retailers, yeah. um, is possibly not a long-term mm. uh, uh, solution. Mm. And what I've realized now, talking to a lot of the guys in the retail sector, is that creating your own brand mm. type of situation would pop possibly be more beneficial in growing your business. So you start okay. off small, okay. but start quality type of product, whatever the case may be. And then obviously you've got your online platforms. I mean, yeah. when we started selling on an online platform, I mean, when we started with Takelot, we were doing, well, a big sizable business, big chunk of business with them. We had sold the brand to them and they bought into the brand from me as well. Okay, so, cool. So you take over, so you buy a product from China, yeah. you branded Gary's I, no, Okay, yeah, so I, 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 so I registered a brand. Hey. All right, and I took the brand and I said, okay, I propose, did a proposal to them and they said, well, we're looking at creating a brand of our own. I said, well, I have a brand available for you. Okay. Here's the brand. I'll basically give it to you next to nothing, right. cool. but you have to buy into my products basically nice. and Clear create a, a range of products, nice. which worked out quite well. Yeah. But, but remember, the online business at the time wasn't as buoyant as it mm. is today. Mm. The, there was mm. no COVID issues. There was, mm. so, so, so today it's like a very big business, a very buoyant business. It's probably the biggest growing business. And if you look at any retailer, the, the online platform mm. would probably be their biggest store mm. in their business. Mm. Uh, which is funny to, say, to see it because we come from a culture of going to touch a product oh, and understanding the product and yeah. buying the product in a store. I'm still like that. I mean, I can't pay sure, a thousand rand sure. and hope that it gets here. I still want to go shut it Of course, of course. <laughs> but... But it's changed, and, it, yeah. and, it's, and the, the middle end of the market is also starting to buy into that type of yeah. situation because it's easy to send back. Mm. It's mm. easy to get your money back. Mm. It's mm. not like it's a difficult pro yeah. problem anymore yeah. to deal yeah. with. Okay, cool. So Jim is online now and we're selling... No, no, we're not online. Okay. So we're currently only using the online platforms available All to right. us. All right, okay. Like okay. Takealot, like okay. uh, One Day Only, All those right. kind of things So you don't well. have your own online store yet? No, no, yeah. we don't have our own online okay, store cool. yet. I think... I think we, we first need to re-establish ourselves, re-establish our brand, mm -hmm. need to also understand where we're going to from here, mm -hmm. what is our long-term solution rather than to look at the short-term situations. Mm -hmm. um, and then once we've developed the plan, then we'll yeah. go back to that as well. Okay, so what's the brand and what, what products is like your own? What is Gary's product name and uh, products? <laughs> I can't actually own products at this stage, purely okay. because the products that I do for other retailers is their product. Right, okay, I get you. I'm the guy, I'm the guy behind the scenes. Yeah. Uh, in, 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 like, I would be called the Chinaman. Yeah. Standing behind the scenes, 
doing all the work, making sure you get your product on time, making sure the production gets booked, making sure that the goods get shipped on time. Yeah. That's my job. Okay, cool. So for me to so like, like if you if you take a brand like the, like the guys that you've done before, like yeah. way whatever, I'm not there. I'm not that guy. I'm the guy behind the scenes. Okay. okay. I don't sell my brand at this stage. Okay. Okay, so the middleman type of thing. I'm the I'm still the guy in the in the yeah. background, yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, let's talk entrepreneurship quickly. Um, if you could start all over again, what would you do different? I would probably spend another five or six years in in corporate, uh, not specifically any other retailer, but ShopRite. I think uh, I think when you move from that type of corporate environment into a different corporate environment, it it, it it's like two different situations. It's like so different that, 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 I, that I felt I missed out, missed out on something. Mm. 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 Um, <coughs> from a risk point of view, I wouldn't have been so... so, so, so uh, <laughs> I think I took a lot of risks. Uh, unnecessary risks as well. Um, I think I would be... I would think I would manage my risk a little bit better now. Mm. Um, obviously, when I look at creating a partnership with people, I consider what the financial situations would be, what mm. would my, my time situation would be. Mm. So from that point of view, obviously when you're a little bit younger, you wanna, you wanna keep on pushing and doing yeah. things or whatever the case may be. Um, outside of that, I think I'm pretty happy with where I am right now. I don't think anybody could possibly be at best stage of their life right now, especially yeah. during the COVID situation. Yeah, yeah. But I think going forward, I think we're possibly looking at a very good plan for the next four to five years. Okay, cool. So you're talking about the risks, uh, biggest mistakes and biggest lessons, except now for not staying longer on a checkers. <laughs> business decisions that you made that you thought, you know what, I probably should have done this differently. Yeah, I mean, from, from, from that point of view, I mean, there was a lot of things that I, I, I took risks on. I mean, especially the nightclub business. I think Sorry? that the nightclub business, I think that would possibly be one of the things that... You own a nightclub? Used to. Okay, cool. Part owner, not right. okay. full owner. Um, I think that would possibly be something I wouldn't want to do again or okay, ever. Cool. I think that was a bit too risky. Okay. I think it was a bit, it was a bit, uh, yeah, not something that was in the in my stable at that time mm. as well. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? It was mm. something that was off the cuff. It was something that was, it took up a lot of my time mm. and it took up a lot of effort just to manage that process as well. Mm. So I don't think that is something that I would have. Mm. If I had to choose again, would yeah. have done again. Yeah, and I think probably that lesson is also stick to what you know type of thing. It's 100% like right, and, and, and manage your risks. Yeah. Manage your risks, ma manage your time, uh, um, especially from a personal point of view as well. Yeah, okay. Um, but um, as from lessons learned, uh, try and know as much about your business and all the third party influences. Okay. So, if you have to have an accountant or you have to have an auditor, try and understand what they're doing. Okay. Try and manage your perception of uh, onto them. They mustn't come to your business and tell you how to run your business. Okay. You have to say, this is my expectation. Yeah. This is what I want. This is my, 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 my cutoffs. Okay. This is, so, so you find yourself, when you're working with these professional type of situations, they determine timelines. They determine when they're okay, ready to see right, you, right, I get you. Which, which is not really supposed to be like that. Yeah. You're still the customer, so you should still be yeah. acting like the customer yeah. kind of situation. Okay. Um, so except for the nightclub business, what other businesses did you venture into? Alcohol business. Okay. Uh, we still have, uh, myself and Josh. Uh, what, what's that, the liquor store? No, 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 no. We're that? also trying to sell to retail as well. Okay, cool. So we still sell to retail, uh, locally produced products. Nice. Um, uh, the company's called Piccolo Vino. Okay. Um, we have some listings. Uh, uh, obviously, my approach is always go to the big guy first yeah. and try and get a listing, whatever the case may be. But obviously, th that business is slightly different mm. because there you have to prove yourself first before mm. they actually go to a warehouse or you can start getting big orders or that mm. kind of situation. Mm. So, so we're getting there. We're starting to work on it now. Obviously, because of the COVID, we're now moving past that yeah. and we're starting to make some progress yeah. there as well. Yeah, like you, like you said now, you approach the big guy first. Would you advise that for entrepreneurs? Like if you have a product... Don't be scared not to. Do it. Why not? They can only say no. Like I said, a no is as good as a yes. But now he knows about you. Mm. So a year down mm. the line, now you've established your brand in the That's smaller businesses. Good, yeah. You yeah. can go back to say, okay, now I've done this. Mm. I've now managed to get listings at 
15 independents, and this is my turnover with these 15 independents. Mm. If it works in their business, it should be able to work that's in your actually business. Very, that's actually a very nice approach, because normally when sure. you start, you have this, okay, we're just going to do here at the bottom, the big, for example, the pick and pay zone. Go to the guy, say, this is why I introduce yourself, mm. leave a business card, leave a portfolio, mm. let him, with it lies there, it's and gathers dust. Yeah. But a year later, you set up the same appointment, you say, this is what I've done so far. Mm. So now you've seen, He's seen that you've got drive. Yeah. So now, okay, hang on. I definitely want this guy in my business because he can make me a lot of money as well. Yeah, yeah. That's how big retailers look at it. Okay. But that, that's, a, that's an awesome lesson. I think that's quite significant. Yeah, I mean, that, that's basically, even if you're a buyer as well, uh, uh, a buyer should actually prove to the supplier that he's worth investing in. Mm -hmm. So if the price of a, this bottle of sanitizer is 10 rand, and I'm, he's coming to me for the first time. Okay, I'm paying 10 rand for it. Mm -hmm. Give me a couple of hundred cases. I put it in the store. It sells well. Now I'm saying, hang on, I want 1,000 cases. Mm -hmm. Now I want 10,000 cases. Now I say, hang on, Mr. Supplier. Mm -hmm. Now I'm selling 10,000 cases a month. I expect you now to come to the party. Mm -hmm. I need a marketing budget. I need money to do for store yeah. openings. I need yeah. money for that. I need money for yeah. that. Now you have to play the part. So now he, the supplier is now happy with what he's got. Yeah. Now he has to come to the party and help you out as the buyer to obviously generate yeah. more profits and obviously yeah. get you in a better position in your business as wow, well. Wow, that's very cool. So, okay, so what are you telling the entrepreneur that has a product and he wants his product on the shelves of Pick and Pay? Uh, first, go into the business. Understand what they're doing at right now. Um, look at your competitors. If, if um, Coming back to that, um, uh, there's a book called The Blue Ocean Strategy. Uh, basically, what it teaches you is that if you're going to sell a Coke, and now you're going to call it Poke or whatever, uh, uh, and now you have to compete against Coke, why would I as a buyer look at your product in the first place? Mm -hmm. But have you done the research? Have you said, okay, Mr. Buyer, but I can now, you can sell this product 50% cheaper than the Coke. Mm -hmm. Different, different, different scenario altogether. Because mm. now the buyer is thinking, hang on, maybe I can buy some market share from the other guys by having the cheaper version in my mm. business as well. Mm. Mm. That's the okay. type of approach. So right. you have to go investigate the business, right. see where the opportunities are, and then make a decision whether it would be worth enough for the buyer to, to consider your product. All right, awesome. Okay, so Gary is working, and of course, as an entrepreneur, you decide to do everything by yourself. When do you decide, uh, I need someone to help me, and how do you... Like in, I think any business owner is very scared to let go of anything because <laughs> they, the, they can do everything the best that they can do. Sure. When, and I mean, when do you decide, okay, now I need help, and how do you go about looking for someone for help? I mean, what, how does that go? Well, 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 my approach, uh, uh, also look at how other companies do it. I mean, they always look for the guys that have the most experience. Mm. In my case, because we're a very young company, mm. I actually look for the people with less experience. Okay. Um, but but you, you pick up a trend in, in, in when you go through a CV, for instance, and you say, okay, the, the schoolwork wasn't so cool. Yeah. Matric, yeah, it was okay. Yeah. But but you see this progress of, of mm. doing better every year. Mm. So you know, okay, hang on, this person's got drive. So you, you get people you can trust and mm. teach from start to finish. Mm. A lot of the guys that walk into your business, they seem to know better than you because mm. they've got five or 10 or 15 years experience. So they always know something. But the reality is you have your business model. Mm. You have to create your culture in your business and make sure that they understand that this is the culture of this business. And, but still have to be open-minded enough to listen to that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. have to be open-minded because a lot of the good ideas I get today is from the younger generation in any case, where they tell you, but I like this, mm. or I want this, or, mm. or this is what I mm. prefer, mm. or this is the color I prefer, mm. or this is the style I prefer. So you, you, I'm stuck in my way. So I shop a certain way, yeah. I do a certain thing, I buy a certain thing. But now you have to listen to those opinions to make sure that you keep up with those type of trends as well. Mm -hmm. So how long, how long before you appointed your first person? And I mean... Almost immediately. I think uh, wow. in 2014, uh, right. Celeste joined me. Um, she's always been with me. Okay, she's, cool. she's been with me forever. Um, uh, then after that, I think it was... Uh, no, it was actually my, a couple of other guys. Obviously, uh, since then, they've moved on. Um, and then, obviously, we then, just before COVID hit, mm. we then moved to a new office, new showroom, mm. because now we wanted to extend our business. We wanted to extend the look and feel of the business. 
And then obviously COVID happened, so we were stuck in a bit between a rock and a hard place. Mm. But we're starting to get there again. Mm. We're starting to grow mm. again. Yeah, so I mean, uh, one of the things that but always... Because you, you need people. You need support. You, yeah. you constantly need support. People that, uh, that also understand what your needs are. And you can't always be there. Yeah. You have to have your time as well. You, you train people to do certain things in, in, to their strengths as well, mm. to their abilities. Not mm. to what you want all the time, but yeah. you have to identify their abilities and make sure that you, yeah. you work towards that. Yeah. So, I mean, now with your own business, what is your, personally, what is your definition of Gary is successful? What is success in your, wor in your world? Longevity. Uh, I want the brand to be there the next 15, 20 years. All right, cool. I want people to know that these products come from a stable that had a rich mm. history in mm. product sourcing mm. or whatever the case may be. Mm. So whether I'm there or not, the brand or the business must still carry forward mm. 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 with those people that were appointed in those positions as well, mm. especially from the bottom up. <coughs> and as your, like as your, let's call it relationship as an entrepreneur with money changed? A lot. In what sense? Uh, <coughs> uh, you see, in the beginning, when you when you start making some tom, you you, you what tend you call to some tom. Yeah. Okay, so, cool. so 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 you, you, you <laughs> tend to go overboard. Okay. Cool. You, you tend to change your lifestyle. You tend to do things differently. Right. Uh, and then you realize when you start losing it. Mm -hmm. But hang on. Mm -hmm. What's happening now? You, then you don't know how to figure it out, whatever. Mm. So, so you, you need to make sure that when you're an entrepreneur, you pay yourself a salary. Okay, cool. First things first, you pay yourself a salary in line with the company's earnings, not with your expectation of what a salary is. Okay, okay. That's always the case because... Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and, and, and then obviously, uh, also a big lesson I've learned is that when you buy assets, try and buy it in cash mm. because Remember, if things go wrong, you can sell it in cash as well. Mm. There's no, th because that, that little, that cash mm. can help your business, can help you go forward, can help you survive mm. a two year stand of COVID kind of situation. Mm. So, so that's also very important when you do mm. things and make those type of decisions mm. as well. Okay, cool. So relationship change is, number one, at least pay yourself a salary if you're an entrepreneur. Even if yes. it's small, does, salary. That mean, does that mean like, in line with your earnings, with your company earnings. Okay, all right. In line with your company earnings, you set yourself a target, say 10% of my earnings, or my, not your GP, of your of revenue. Your revenue. Yeah. 10% of your revenue can go to salaries. Yeah. Where the revenue goes past that, you give yourself a yearly increase. Mm -hmm. you give yourself a yearly bonus. Nothing changes from corporate to when you work for yourself. You're just managing your numbers now instead yeah. of someone else's numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually, that's actually quite interesting. Okay, it's like, for me also, you always think about the salary. Ugh, I'd, I'd rather just put it back in, just let the business keep it. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Sometimes you have to make those type of decisions mm. when things get really hard. Yeah. But maintaining uh, uh, um, your lifestyle as well, mm. maintaining uh, your children, maintaining mm. uh, whatever mm. you need to maintain to, to, yeah. to make sure that you get up in the morning, whatever the case may be, is yeah. also very important. Yeah. Okay, cool. So three, as an entrepreneur, three biggest lessons, personally. Personally. Uh, I think I've got, I'll get back to the, obviously the first thing is manage your risk. Yeah. Definitely. Um, understand what the risk is and what your risk will be in the business cool. going forward. Uh, two, try and be different. Always try and be different. I mean, I, I don't know why people get stuck on that idea of trying to sell the same product that the other guy is selling. Try something else. You might think it's silly, or someone else might think it's silly, but the, the right guy might come along and say, hang on, I think you've got a right idea there. Mm -hmm. And that would make you a, a big guy in less than a six months or what a year, whatever the case may be. Did you experience that? Once or twice, I think I think the first time I've experienced that was while I was working for a corporate. Okay. Uh, the mini oven issue, like uh, we've always had to fight in the, in, the, in, the, in the retail sector about the mini oven. Uh, because the mini oven is essentially a toaster oven. Okay. Uh, and, and the Americans... Is that the one that you pull down like that? Yeah, it's, yeah it's open, it pulled yeah. down, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but for, for Africa, we put two plates on the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so for Africa, we put two plates well, on the well, top. Essentially, the product yeah. the first time okay, we came to Africa. Yeah. But 
and then I remember this discussion with my director. He said, now send it to the checker stores. And that time, one of the uh, regional managers that was running um, the store in Kalicha and uh, Philippi, mm. he said, uh, well, give me 50 of each. Let me see what I can do with these products. It went in, it disappeared. Less than wow. Week. Went back to my director. Listen, I did something, but please understand why I did it. Yeah. And, he, and I showed him the figures and said, listen, you know, we have to change our whole mindset around this product. Yeah. And that's how that, well, that line nice. became one of the biggest products in, in, in South Africa. Nice. Okay, so, so be different. Or think, yeah, think, of think different. Try, try and do things differently. Yeah. Manage your risk while you're doing things differently, yeah. obviously. Okay, third lesson? Well, I don't know. The third lesson for me would probably be uh, don't go overboard, especially mm. if it goes well. Okay. Try and manage that. Try, <laughs> try. You know, uh, uh, it's, always, it's, it's always a difficult thing. So I say, uh, always make this joke. Yeah, make a million, lose a million. Okay. Yeah. But, but, and, and be okay with it mm. to lose that million. Don't mm. fret. Don't, still get up in the morning. Mm. Still go and find a way of, of getting it done. Mm. And I think that's probably the, the biggest thing is being able to get up. Mm. Uh, not being so, you know, so heartbroken yeah. about losing business yeah. or whatever the case may be. I think you just have to just. Yeah. Take a step back and just re reevaluate the problem. Was there ever a time where you thought, you know what, I think I must go back to corporate, this is not for me? Several. Several. Uh, that's normally in the evening, but by the morning I'm up again, definitely not. It, it, a lot of people mm. told me to go back to corporate. Mm. And I just thought to myself, you know, um, I can't see myself doing that. I can see myself doing it. It would possibly be easy for me to do it. It would possibly be. But, but I would never be satisfied mm. that I've reached the goals that I want to reach. Mm. I'll never be satisfied. So I'll, I'll do the job and I'll probably do well at the job, whatever the case is, but it won't be something that I would be, yeah. be wanting to do or, or love doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, what are the big dreams? Personally, the reindustrialization of Paul. The what? Reindustrialization of Paul. Let's hear that. That sounds interesting. Simple. Uh, if I look at what if I look at what uh, uh, China's doing, mm. and I'm not saying we should now start building factories with big molds in it and pollute our air, whatever the case yeah, is. We don't, said, we don't want that, yeah, we don't. I said, what I'm saying is, why can't we use what we have? The structures. We have plenty of open plants here. Mm. We have plenty of people. Mm. We can start assembling. The last process of the production is assembling, and the assembling takes most of the time, takes most of the QA, the quality control, takes most of the people are involved in the assembling of the product. And the actual fact of the matter is that when you assemble the product in South Africa, you don't pay duty mm -hmm. on the parts coming in. You create work. As it, as it, and Paul is one of those places where I think we've got plenty of people that can work at, 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 in factories and, 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 and learn a new trade and you know, that kind of thing. So how far are we, are we with that? No, no, I'm not even close. We first have to reestablish the business <laughs> and then get back to that and get people to the table kind of situation. Yeah. Um, what else? Big dreams? I establish, establish my own appliance brand. Um, so what are we talking about? Your brand in terms of kettles and toasters? Now those appliances? Or yes, what? yes. Okay, cool. in, in terms of not necessarily to toasters and kettles, it might be more uh, focused, Yeah, uh, might be more, so I looked at what, what, what the current situation has brought up, uh, upon us is that a lot of people cook at home now. Yeah. So people are buying into... Air fryers. Cooking appliances, okay. not necessarily air fryers. Because oh, I know that's like the mad thing now, is air fryers. <laughs> sure, air fryers <laughs> is big. I mean, it's, they, they talk about 1.4 billion US dollars before the end of next year. That's how big this business is going to grow. Who's the, like, who's of the, the owner? Of, who's the owner of, who's no, 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 no. Air fryers, air fryers, uh, I'm not going to get into it because yeah. I think this will offend a lot of the companies out there. Okay. But the air fryer business is, is, is actually a very smart business. Uh, it's, a, it's a healthy cooking process, yeah, number yeah. one. So obviously people are buying into that. Yeah. Uh, uh, it started, like every other product started out very high, it's now to starting to, to come down in price. Yeah. So, so the likes of the Phillips and the Russell Hobbs and those yeah. guys are really getting into it and they're doing very, very well with yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, especially Phillips. I think they're doing an amazing job of that business. Okay. 
And I think a lot of the other guys are now starting to say, hang on, mm. they're losing traction because these guys have gone into four or five models and we're mm. stuck with our own little model, whatever mm. the case may mm. be. Mm. Mm. Okay. But I, I would possibly say, uh, yeah, home cooking, okay, definitely. Cool. But, but we must also not uh, you know, walk away from the situation where we're not using South African styling. We're still using very European, very Asian styling. Mm. We must start getting our engineers involved in, in, mm. in looking at, at producing products. I mean, some of the products in the world couldn't be copied by when the South African engineers made it. The panel heater, mm. um, the Chinese still can't copy it. Was it made in South Africa? It was engineered in South Africa, it was wow. made in South Africa. They moved the production over to China, but that guy owns the patent. Nobody else can copy it. They've tried, they've broken it down. It's impossible to, 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 mm. to produce. Mm. So that is, so, so, so we shouldn't, we should understand that our engineers have done a lot of serious good work in, yeah. in, the, in the world markets. Yeah. Yeah, but I always like find it fascinating. Like we're all on these platforms of Zoom and Teams, and sure. so I always think of why hasn't South Africa not done a local Zoom? Like when South Africans can use it. Hundred percent right. Why must we use the? Uh, probably because they've got the, the establishment. But I mean, someone can do it. Yeah, but, but you see, the the unfortunate part, I think, in in our arenas or in, in in our business world in South Africa is that. A lot of the people that have the money are so much older, mm. so they've established themselves. Mm. They, they're not really, you understand, mm. where if you look overseas, a lot of those people are younger uh, and younger, they get seed yeah. money much quicker yeah. and, they can, and whether the idea works or not, they just yeah. go for it. Yeah. So they've got for every one year, you get like the 10,000 over there kind yeah. of situation. Yeah. So if three works over there, it becomes big situations. Yeah. Okay, so give me the typical life of Gary van der Berg as a business owner. Oh, um, but typical day, not typical life. Typical day? Mm. Uh, meetings. I mean, what time are you waking up? Normally very early. Okay. Uh, say from four onwards. What? Uh, yeah, sometimes I get calls from Skeeter, or whatever the case was. What, what we do is we try and... So if, if I need to s have some stuff done urgently, you need to speak to him this morning to get it done for that day. Jeez. So remember, it's four o'clock here. Jeez. It's 10 o'clock in the morning there already. Yeah. So by the time it's eight o'clock, it's two o'clock. Day's basically gone from our office point of view. Yeah. So if you want things done, whatever you used to start at four. Okay. Not every day. Yeah, of course not. No, not every day, but uh, some days in the week I start very early. Okay. Uh, what do we do? Have a fitness routine? Nothing. Not not what you call not, it not, yoga not, not, not at this stage. Okay. Not at this stage. At this stage, all we have to do now is concentrate on getting getting back to normal again, mm -hmm. and then obviously from there we will start looking at our personal. Yeah. wants and needs and whatever the case may so be. So we get up in the morning, for go to still office? What, go to the office, come back from the office, cook a little bit. Mm. So I still love to, do, to, to cook in the evenings, whatever yeah. the case may be. I have a chat with the kids, whatever the yeah. case may be, and then uh, to bed again. So like, how would you tell an entrepreneur in terms of time management? So of course you think that you're working 24 hours for your business. What did you no, experience? No, no, no. So, I mean, you need to manage that. You, you, need to, you need to understand what is the most important times of the day. If you have something to present or if you have something to, to get done, obviously you put the hours in, you make sure that it's done at least a week or a couple of days before the time, especially if you have to present to, yeah. to a retailer. So you can prepare yourself, yeah. read through it, yeah. uh, understand. Because when you talk, talk to a product, you can't talk looking down. Mm. They need to understand mm. that you know what you're talking about. Yeah, 100%. So, so you read it, you prepare, yeah. you print out a day of two before the time, yeah. so that you know things are prepared, cool, man. you're comfortable, you just grab the bag and go. Cool. Okay, so last question. Uh, we have uh, entrepreneurship day, Gary van der Berg is in the Stadtsaal on the stage, and there's a lot of aspiring entrepreneurs. What is your advice? Like if you had to give them three pieces of advice, I, I think. I um, what must it be? Oh. Even if you have to repeat what you told me. <laughs> no, no, I mean, listen, it's not everyone that can, can be an entrepreneur. I mean, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a difficult decision to make. But again, stick to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, if that is what you, what you want to become and that's what your dream is, then you do it. Mm -hmm. Don't let people put you off. Uh, like I said, it might sound like a bad idea to some. But there's always a guy in the car, always someone out there that's going to sit at the back of the back of the wall and say, "Listen, I like this guy. I like mm. what he's talking about." Because mm. sometimes not always about the product. Mm. It's sometimes about his drive. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if I look at where myself and Josh started with they, the a product, 
we, we've not, not even considering that product anymore. We've moved past, we've mm. moved on because he's drive to decide, well, hang on. Yeah. We can't get stuck on this. We yeah. have to move to a, into a yeah. different direction. Yeah. So, <coughs> so I think that's, that's very important. Okay, cool. Next. Uh, I don't know. Create a routine. Create a routine of methodology, of thinking. Uh, give yourself a day in the week where you go into the stores and look at what the people are doing or where if you're in that t category or what category you're working. Expose yourself to other people's ideas mm. um, so that you become more creative as well. Mm. Mm. Uh, I always forget the, the, the impression, I always get the situations where people suggest a new line to me mm. and I tell them it's already been done. Yeah. They yeah. don't realize it. Yeah. So you haven't Googled. You haven't yeah. checked the internet. You haven't yeah. gone into a store. You haven't looked around. Yeah. So you just thought this up and thought, this is now the greatest idea in the world. But yeah. you haven't actually researched the product. Awesome. Awesome. So, that <laughs> so I and think that... Uh, and mentors? Well, what you've done in mentors? Finding someone that you want to get... Yeah. To mentoring, I would say I've, I've had a lot of good examples, a lot of good uh, uh, mentors in my life. Mm. Um, you know, mentoring is, is, is a very, almost like a submissive word to me because mm -hmm. you, you're saying that the guy can only do that kind of situation where, where I find that I mean, you, you take the good parts out of people. Mm -hmm. You take, I don't want to be mentored into a thinking, into a yeah. pattern, into, right, you know, cool. I take what I want from that situation, I take from that guy, take the good that you can mm -hmm. work with. Mm -hmm. no, no two people are the same. Okay, cool. So it's very difficult to say that. You can be like that because he mentored me. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't say I mentor people. I say just take the good stuff. Yeah, because there's plenty of bad as well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's bad habits. Um, okay, so what is the product's name? So if we see it on the shelves, we know that Gary's. Well, at this stage, at, at, at this stage, we can look at the back of the box. It's specially packed by Gym Appliances. Okay, cool. Okay. But going forward, I mean, I'm 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 planning a couple of things. No, no brand like thinking like. No name that you have on <laughs> well, the Well, there, there is a couple of brands, but obviously uh, some of the brands are, are international brands that I want to bring. Okay. It doesn't be Africa. called Gary's? No. Okay, cool. No, 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 no definitely okay. not. Uh, but obviously then there is one or two new stuff that I'm looking at. There okay, is a cool. brand uh, called Grillby that we might be looking at starting this year okay. or beginning next year. Okay, cool. What is Grillby? Uh, also, home cooking. Okay, cool. Home right, cooking, home in. cooking. Uh, and then I'm also looking at then some of the outdoor mm. type of products okay. as well. Everything from China? No, not okay, necessarily. Cool. I mean, right. we're looking, we're actually working now with Italy. Oh, nice. We're working with uh, um, India. Nice, okay, cool. So, so there's a couple of products from those areas looking uh, like to, that, to come to the fore as well. Gary, thanks, man. Pleasure. Uh, very interesting. I hope it was... Uh, yeah, there were a lot of lessons that I <laughs> mentally just put here at the back of my head. Um, yeah, but good luck with the new brand. Good luck with the products. Excellent. Ho hopefully we see it on the pick and pays and the shop right checkers and the clicks shelves soon. Hopefully, hopefully. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there are any questions from you guys. Uh, anything? Anything? Yes, I think hey? Facebook uh, question. Okay, cool. Is there a qu Facebook question? Okay, I'll ask a question. I'll get to you now, madam. Generally, yes, uh, um, but like I said, in, 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 in retail or in that type of market, trust is built over years. So you, you won't find a situation, or in some cases you find that people have worked together as well. Mm. So, so mm. there is a lot of that type of animosity yeah. as well where the people yeah. work together. But, but yeah, probably that's a, probably definitely a true statement, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, can you, she's got a question, can I give her the mic? Yeah, you can have. Okay, <laughs> name and surname. And okay, first of all, why are you here? Um, I'm Abigail Leroux. Um, yeah. I started my own website, marketing. Okay. Um, I just want to know I have to create a proposal. Mm -hmm. I need ideas. Um, I've done my research, but to put it on paper, I'm struggling a bit. Uh, you need to do a proposal for, for finance? Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, so, so, so when, obviously, I, th I think from to start off with, I think you, you might have to actually look at existing proposals. 
and then try and almost make it your own kind of situation because I think it's, it's very difficult. I don't understand your business that well, but any business for that matter, you, you, when, you do, when you look at the financing or costing of a product, you, you first, and I think yours more labor intensive, so you would, you would probably say, okay, what, what is my price? What, what am I going to charge for to, to per hour? So now you create a cost. Because remember, when people, when I look at a proposal, I want to understand what I'm going to pay. Mm. I want to know that I can now cost that cost into my business. Because <coughs> it's like you would be my service provider. Mm. So when you come and see me, you need to know for 100 hours, or so, so this product, if I take a kettle, how are you going to market? Give me the five modules. Mm. Tell me it's going to go to social media. Tell me it's going to go that, whatever. So now you go say, how, how many hours do you need on social media? You need to reach 20,000 people. You need X amount of hours. That's easy to cost because you can go to Facebook costing and see how much it's going to cost you. You add your 20 or 30% to that, whatever. So, the only, so all of that, as a, so you start off with the small things. Mm. And you, then you create what you call a portfolio. So now you say, okay, you are the customer. These are the five packages we can offer you. This is five shoots on Facebook, five shoots on the social media, social pages, whatever the case would be. And this is my design on website and to maintain. For once of cost, because if you're a startup, I don't think there's a lot of the guys that do websites, they charge a lot of money. But for you to create a, a platform where you know, uh, a lot of the guys that they can't afford to do their own website. Okay, so now here's an in for you because another guy wants to charge a hundred thousand rand. They said no, initial startup cost ten thousand, but pay me three thousand a month. But now you've got five clients. Now you mm -hmm. you're already getting ten thousand rand a month mm -hmm. from the five clients plus the ex initial fifty. Mm -hmm. So your five clients now maintains you. Now they create a portfolio for you because now you've created yourself a brand. You advertise those five websites as if it's yours. So they give them a contract and say. This is what I want to do. With, this is what I want to do going forward. Now you become the hundred thousand rand guy. You mm. understand? Mm. So you need to start that small to be able to get to that big. But mm. when you start pr with proposals like that, you go look at your cost and you, mm. and then from that point of view, you start building up packages. Yeah, I mean, like, what do you what do you tell people that uh, entrepreneurs that want to start a business with funding? Like they always say, I've got an idea, but I need funding. Or what's what's your view on that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so funding is a funny because, thing. Because, I mean, nowadays that's the thing. I mean, yeah, fu fu funding is a funny thing for me. Funding, because when I started out, you couldn't get. I mean, most yeah. of the banks told me, no, yeah. they're not going to fund me, whatever the case may be. Yeah. So I said, okay, then I just changed the model. Yeah. Yeah. So instead of offering a RAND price, I offered the FOB price, which is a Chinese price, which is a, sorry, a dollar price. So they pay dollars um, to an offshore account, which I then get mm. my profits from. Mm. But I don't get the profits. The profits goes into the company as a loan, basically. Mm. So you just a salary yeah. kind of situation. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not, I think, funding, uh, yeah, uh, to be honest with you, uh, it's very difficult for, for me to explain the funding situation because I've never been really successful in the funding yeah. arena. Yeah. Um, here and there, over the years, uh, especially now, uh, we've got a situation where I've got one guy that's more than willing to fund us against uh, business yeah. coming in. So, so now if I get a order or I get a, a proposition of order, say they have the guys happy with the sample, they happy with the product, and say okay, we're gonna start off with that amount, whatever. So, so when I look at funding, I say okay, hang on, but I'm only willing to take about twenty percent of the funding mm. required, mm. and we do the others offshore yeah. from an offshore bank kind of situation. Yeah. So funding is, it's, it's, remember, it's money going out. Yeah. Funding is not an asset. It's, it's yeah. always money going out. Yeah. But like I said, uh, any entrepreneur should start out and small and, and manage because, you, like I said, you must go look, do your research around your competitors. You know what they're charging. But now when you, you walk into an office of, a, of a, a possible client, you have to ask yourself the question, is he going to take me serious? Mm. He's going to look at you and he's, he's going to look at the situation and say, okay, hang on. But if you five times cheaper than the other guy, hang on. Mm -hmm. Let me just see what he's done before. Mm -hmm. yeah, you understand? And that's how you get your foot in the door. Cool, man. You see? Be different.
Mr. G, thanks. Thank you very much. I Mr. really Manar. enjoyed it. Um, it was good questions. Uh, any other questions there, um, Mr. G? Good. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Guys, thank you for joining. Guys, thank you also for joining. Um, yeah, until next time, uh, we'll chat again, Paul, Business Lab. Goodbye.